shared with our men's group, speaking of words and the importance of words, the importance of meanings of words, uh, I've got my little list I put in my notes and my phone of words that I don't want to misuse anymore. So I've kind of put my, a, a prohibition on myself from using words incorrectly or even using the words. And, and the number one, and you may have gathered this already, is church. We misuse that word. And even though we may know what the word means, if we continually misuse it, I feel like it gets into our heart and it contaminates our heart. If I go to church, which we know is a misuse of the word, but if we speak of it that way, then it gets into our mind and heart and becomes that. So I refuse to use the word church to mean a building, to mean an organization, to mean other than what it's meant, which obviously is defined in this book here, Ecclesia, an assembling and gathering of the saints of God to legislate his kingdom here on earth. Worship. We constantly in Christendom, charismatic and, and Protestantism, use worship to mean the song service of a church service. And that's not what worship is. Anyone who's been around a while, been discipled a while, read a little bit of the Bible, knows that worship does not mean a song service. Worship does not mean songs. Songs and a song service can be part of our worship, but it's not what worship means. But we use that word almost entirely to speak about a song service. And it so takes away from what worship really is. Yeah, 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 but we know that. But once again, it gets into our mind and our heart if we use that word that way to where we start believing it. So I refuse to use speaking of, oh, wasn't worship good this week? And speaking of a song service, no. Worship is every moment of every day of our lives, giving our all to our Creator. That's what worship is. He's worthy of it. Communion. That's another one of my pet peeve words. Communion is not a word that's used like we use it in the Bible. Communion and koinonia, maybe the more uh, original Greek word, is a fellowship of the saints. When people use the word communion to speak of the Lord's Supper, and I think the, it became communion when it became a religious ritual. So I refuse to use that word to speak of the Lord's Supper. I've got a, a list a few more. I'll just cut it off here. One of my pet peeve terms is personal Lord and Savior. You know, you won't find that in the biblical reference. And I get why it came into use and what it's to mean. It means to personally receive him for yourself into your heart. But the way we express it as my own personal Lord and Savior, I, I get this image of, I got my pocket Savior here. This is my own personal uh, Lord and Savior. And there, there's something about that term that signifies that we own, control, manipulate, have as our own. He's not personal to us in, 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 in that We've got our personal Lord and Savior. You've got your personal Lord and Savior. Everyone's got their own little personal Lord and Savior. No, that's not a biblical term. And I believe that the use of that term and the connotations that go with it take away from the majesty, the preeminence, the supremacy, the fear of the Lord. It's my little talk on words today. Words are important. Words have meaning. The origins of words are important in understanding them. I just want to share some of the thoughts I had uh, to go along with the post I made about, hey, and when you get a chance, tell me what books did you read in 2018 that had an impact on your life? I've shared the three of mine. I'm going to continue on reading. I'm going to continue on sharing books that impact me. Let me know what you're reading that's impacted your life this year. Lee Newton. I am Newt, broadcasting from OK Island. God bless you.